is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network, produced in association with Michigan State University. Welcome to MSU Today. I'm Jim Peck in a rainy, empty Spartan Stadium. Here's what's coming your way right now. You don't go to the stadium until the band comes through. And once they've kind of come through, that's your signal. Head to your seats. You know that's jazz when you hear that. Of all the Big Ten campuses, uh, we probably have the most green space, which we're really proud of. Pretty amazing that the show has been around for 20 years. It's incredible. Looking for quiet on campus? Try Spartan Stadium on a rainy weekday. On game day, this place is deafening. And of course, the soundtrack is provided by the marching band. But for the band, there's no preseason. They have to be in top form from game one. Well, we're here at Michigan State University. Uh, it's game day versus Eastern Michigan. We're really excited. It's going to be a great time. First gig. We have been waiting around for three weeks, it seems like. Oh, there's nerves, but I mean, the nerves kind of, you know, make the excitement even better. Like, it gets you more pumped up to do your best out there, so. Oh, just trying to get ourselves ready for the first game, and, you know, as we get closer, we can kind of back out and they figure out what they need to be doing as time goes on. The sections are warming up right now in individual sections. The section leaders are in charge here. You could virtually come here, not buy a ticket, and still get a eye full and ear full of band. <laughs> Please buy the tickets. <laughs> the band is very ready to perform. I mean, we're just ready to, you know, knock walls down or something. I feel like we're playing football today. That's the first formal performance of our day, of a game day when the band marches from Adams Field to Spartan Stadium. It takes us about 10 minutes to get from here to there. But it is, um, it is the drumline who performs. And the instrumentalists and guard members and twirlers and drum majors perform a marching, sort of choreographed marching routine, parade marching routine, to the drumline. That's, that's kind of the order of how things happen. I don't think the average person on the street sees it that way. They just see the band parading down the street. But for us, there's tons that goes into the preparation of that. If, if the Michigan State Band had a famous signature, and we have many, um, I would call the series and the performance of the series, which is the name of the drum cadence, um, one of our most recognizable. What our band looks like on the street is um, one of those things that I'd call iconic. I'd call it a hallmark. And it's what, it's what has become one of the great traditions on a game day on this campus is people lining the streets from Adams Field to the stadium. And, and there's almost a ritual there. You don't go to the stadium until the band comes through. And once they've kind of come through, that's your signal. Head to your seats. We come through the tunnel, uh, we start kick stepping, you hear the drums start going. And then uh, right before we, we charge out of the tunnel, we scream as loud as possible. And then uh, we're going through, we're just charging on the field, you know, we're just trying to focus right on what we're doing. It's, it's, it's really cool, like, you know, just being down there and like 75,000 people cheering for you, so. pregame show is basically the same from week to week. There are changes within the pregame show. Minor changes. Ladies and gentlemen, 
But halftime shows change every week. I don't think anybody pays whatever they pay to go to a Spartan football game to hear the Spartan marching band do, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean seven times. We're not doing Pirates of the Caribbean, by the way. I'm just letting you know, but for example. The third quarter cheer has been happening at Michigan State since the middle 70s, maybe earlier. And, um, you know, the students, they just go nuts. The drumming is that strong of, a, of an art where literally the audience feels magnetized by it. It gravitates to it, and it's, it's, a, it's a powerful musical form. My emotions are that I'm very proud of the, the students, you know. They're, uh, I, th I think everybody saw that today. They, they supported their team, they supported their environment. Uh, they performed their pregame and their halftime shows, you know, with great precision. I don't care that it's hot out. You have to wear your band jacket tonight, wherever you go, all right? Yeah. Yeah. You earned it. Congratulations. All right? Yeah, we're... The show must go on, they say, so off we go, you know, planning the next stuff. Spartan Stadium is the center of football here on campus. The Wharton Center is the center of performance here at MSU. Usually the Wharton Center just kind of sits there, but recently it learned to swing when Wynton Marsalis came to town. Got to lead them, right? Lead them. They they don't. That's why they don't like trumpet. We are the leaders. <laughs> They're gonna be mad at you. Saxophone players been complaining for years. Their reeds. Don't worry about them. <laughs> Make them follow. Wynton Marsalis is at MSU to lead. He leads by example. He leads by taking the time to talk with young musicians. Boom, 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 ba -doom, boom, 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 boom. That's the sound of the bass in jazz. Pyom, 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 pyom. I don't know where that sound came out here. It's like an infection. We got to get rid of that. I don't want you to be in that line. I want you to be in, in, the, in the line of boomers. Boom, 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 boom. These are high school students, but not just any high school students. They're talented musicians who come from around the world to study at the Interlochen Center for the Arts in Michigan. They've come to MSU for this musical master class. They're finding out it's really about how you play the notes of your life. I look at you like if you were one of my own kids, because that's another thing about the music, because the essence of the music is a basic love for people. I used to notice all the older musicians when I was around them, they would greet each other with hugs and stuff. It was kind of strange then at that time. People, men didn't do that too much. But it's a certain love and basic essence to the music that it is about communicating. It's about communication. So I want you, I like your attitude too. You take criticism well. You didn't flinch, you didn't get mad. You know, sometimes you tell, you get close to the kid, they start to get. <laughs> it's all, not you. He's an artist in residence at Michigan State. Here, his residence is wherever people love music, wherever people want to swing. When the rhythm section is great, the band is great. When the rhythm section is sad, mm. Whew because you all play the entire time. Everybody else gets to sit around and look and pretend like they're listening to other people. Y'all can't, you know? You all have to play all the time. It's a blessing to play music. It's got to be exuberant. Hey, I got a chance I'm playing my trombone today. Ooh, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo, trombone. You know, I'm getting to play drums. Ding, 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 ding. Bass. Ba -doo, doo, 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 ba -doo, doo. Playing piano, I'm trumpets, ooh, ooh. Get to look cute in front of people, play. <laughs> you don't want to be like. You have to spend time with the students talking about the music, okay. talking about the history, and sharing, you know, sharing your experiences. It's a, a beautiful job. It's a blessing to have this job. If music is a blessing, Michigan State University is blessed by his personal gospel. His testimony comes in quarter notes and syncopation. It runs the gamut from teaching. See how you can play around? To intimate jazz performance. 
to the composition of Two in Three, the piece he penned for the MSU College of Music and the Detroit Symphony. It premiered at the Wharton Center on campus. If music is a blessing, Wynton Marsalis is downright evangelical in his praise for music, for what it can mean. You can write it down. You can read it. You have to feel it. There's no reason for us playing these horns to start looking at our music and not listen. All that's on the page is ink. The music is all out in the air. Okay, y'all ready? Here we go. I want to hear y'all holler through your horns and let us see. One, two, a uh, one, two, three, uh. -huh. There are those moments when even gifted musicians fall silent in front of such genius, when they feel blessed to witness the musical sermon of Marsalis. I think I was probably shaking my head when the, the, the revelation came to me as to how incredible his teaching was. He's just a master teacher and he just put it right on the table for these kids. Yeah. The, one of the most important things to do on a horn when you're playing jazz is learn how to holler and cry in the horn. When you're playing, You know that's jazz when you hear that. You know it because you feel it. The notes are just notes. The instrument, just a tool. The blues come from inside. The music, it's your life. Those are the most important things. The technical things come far after those things because those things are involved with who you are. And when you play, all you have is who you are. You understand what I'm saying? It's very real musical blessings from a man who knows jazz can be a sacrament if you believe, if you play who you are. In the warmer months, there's a common sound around campus. The sound of tending to trees. The sounds of the arborists. Of all the Big Ten campuses, uh, we probably have the most green space, which we're really proud of, and it's real fortunate to have that. Paul Swartz and his team are almost always hard at work up among the branches and down on the ground. There are more than 20,000 trees on the MSU campus, and they're adding more all the time. When one gets cut down, another one goes in the ground. And they get to use a lot of cool machines, too. This is our Big John tree spade, and it's a 90-inch diameter plug that pulls out of the ground with a tree in it, and they call it a tree spade, but it, it actually, the sh it's like a shovel go into the ground and lift the tree off. That's so it's a very cool. quick way to transplant a large tree. There really are some cool machines. Okay, so now this is a chipper, right? And we can uh, take off the glasses, but we got to stand back. Actually, stump grinder. After okay. we take down the tree and then we chip up the brush, we have the stumps left, so to plant grass or replant another tree. We have to use a stump grinder, and this is the easiest and fastest way to do that. So it's basically, you guys come in, they, they cut the tops off, cut, cut it down, and Chip you flip back with this little chunk. Yeah. Anytime we lose a tree on campus, it's, it's a loss. I mean, we don't like to take trees down and remove trees because we know they have a history behind them. They've been here a long time. A lot of them are unique. It could be one of a kind. And the campus is actually, it's an arboretum where people use it for studying. So each tree is a unique individual and, and um, we have over 7,500 different species of plants on campus. The other thing that we're really concerned with is uh, on campus is exotic insects and diseases. And right now we're dealing with the emerald ash borer which is from China. And that came in about five years ago and it basically could decimate all of our ash trees. We have over 900 ash trees on the developed part of campus, not counting the ones in the woodlots. And so some of the, it's not, it's not just an annoyance, it, it truly is a pain in the ash. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Okay. When a tree has to come down, it's quite a loss. 
Today, Paul and his team are taking down an American elm that's fallen prey to Dutch elm disease. Now, I'm not much of a tree guy, but I wanted to see what this job is like. Of course, it starts with safety. So if you're going to be working inside, you got to wear one of these. Okay, all right. So, Do you always help everybody put them on? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> They're working with chainsaws way up there. But do I get to cut something down? Oh, no. But the view is nice. So back on the ground, Paul's got something he says is more my speed. Not exactly what I had imagined. There is a sense, whether you're clearing brush or taking down a big tree, there's a sense that you're part of something bigger, that you're plugged into the continuum of MSU. I was a student here in 19, a while back, and uh, I remember the first American elm that I saw, and it's still here. And then uh, to know that uh, you know, we're preserving those trees for future generations to learn from. That's what's really neat. Campus is like a tree museum. And if you wonder what you're looking at. We have identification plaques on, the, on individual trees that are significant of, of a certain species to identify that species. So people that, are, that come on campus can actually learn about different species and, and get some information on that little plaque. The trees are always here. You can visit some old friends whenever you come to campus. We really consider ourselves stewards of the campus. We're here for a short period of time, but we want to maintain it so the future generations can, can see the same thing that we're seeing and, and even, even better, you know. For over two decades, the show has been the show here on campus. It's a delightful sitcom that tells the story of, oh, just take a look. In action. The show is the longest running college sitcom. Longest running college sitcom. In, in the United States. It's been going on for 20 years. Oh, we're really proud of that. It's a sitcom. Created by college students. Yes. Um, written by college students. Can you give me another one? Something I'll try again. Slight. This, this is the freaking sequel. Friends, but in a college dorm room. Um, they were printed how we blacked them. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. It's a lot of, um, a lot of fun. Let's not, oh my God! Um, our live taping's in four days. And I'll tell you by the end of rehearsal today. Tonight's our last rehearsal for our episode taping. He's okay. Oh my god! So we're going to be putting the final touches on shots. In five, four. Putting up our set. It is. It's like defeating the purpose of what we're doing. Editing. I like that growl. That's a good one. Light. Cameras. Putting on the old shot sheets. You guys have to have these shot sheets in order. So I know what to point my camera at. Um, lines for actors. How do I use this thing? And then I get up and join you. No. Roland's. Ready to take two. Anything you can think of. You know, you gotta get the shot right. Coming out to camera two. Right Four, Roland. three, two. They just went on sale like uh, he's supposed to be. Ago. She's. So we're just supposed to be moving. It's a pretty big commitment for um, students to be involved with it. This is my third year. Next year will be my last because I'll be graduating. We meet every week. A lot of fun. I've always loved acting, but I'm not intense enough for theater, so it's kind of like a happy medium. Every yeah. few weekends we go out and shoot our exterior scenes. It's kind of fun, too, just being like on a sitcom. You see like other sitcoms, like actual ones on TV. It feels kind of like that. There's a video. Oh, click on it! had a lot of issues, last minute issues, but they're all ironed out. Oh. Oh. We're celebrating our 20th year anniversary. It was created back in 1988 by Greg Harrison. I co-created the show with Scott Grayson in 1988. You know what, I haven't uh, heard from the ultimate stereo yet. How are you guys? I started the second year of the show when it got really good. <laughs> what? Oh, what do you mean, Madonna Dodge? It's something we talked and joked about, actually. Back then, I was like, can you imagine 20 years if this thing is still going on? Is it ridiculous? And it is which is freaky, amazingly freaky. It's uh, pretty amazing that the show has been around for 20 years. It's incredible. Uh, I graduated in 1992, and uh, I went to Los Angeles to become a filmmaker. I am a researcher at Late Night with Conan O'Brien. I work for My Network TV. I'm a uh, writer, producer of on-air promos. Uh, I'm an actor and writer. <laughs> We're doing a 20th anniversary. You should come back for it. I was like, oh, that'd be great. We're having a reunion of MSU Telecaster. It's a, a huge uh, alumni event, the 20th anniversary of the show. And they're coming back to give back to the students who are now 
part of Telecaster's. Your, your line is your introduction to the scene. I think you can sit up. Yeah. You could actually then roll yeah, onto right, the floor, right? Okay. right? right. Yeah. And you're getting up very quickly because you have to go to work. And what's your first line? And it's going great. <laughs> Tom Ingersoll signs the show door. The cut this short because the Lakers game is starting. <laughs> the original pitch was a live comedy show in front of a studio audience with a live band once a week. <laughs> uh, really uh, kind of honoring the legacy of this thing that we did. Started freshman year acting and who knows what the future holds. Uh, kind of a show retrospective, I guess. I remember feeling as though we were, we were doing something. We were on to something. And kind of uh, how it's really evolved over, over the course of the last, you know, 20 years. I don't think we thought we'd be sitting here coming back 20 years later and sitting around with a bunch of other people. And that's where it's amazing to me. What we did here instantly translated to something that impressed somebody in the real world. It looks great on resume. I've had people ask me about it. People who were writing actual TV shows were impressed by what we wrote here at, at Michigan State. My academic advisor says it's really make me an interesting candidate to get into med school. So. It's really talented kids get their foot in the door. It's not too surprising. I, it makes me proud more than anything. The one thing that kept us going, the juice that kept us going, is we made each other laugh. It does really is a, is a foundation for everything that comes next. I talk about it all the time in my real life. I only wish I could do it over again and do more.